Welcome to 21st Century Radio. I'm Dr. Zohara Hieronymus. Laura Kortner is our executive producer and Anita Brockington, our engineer. Quote, we are the consciousness within the living one, unquote, explains our guest this hour, Dr. Meg blackburn Losey. After her own life-threatening journey and unexpected changes as a part of that, Dr. Meg continues, as she did in her prior works, The Children of Now, and a series devoted to the topic, to address the amazing changes taking place on Earth and beyond. She joins us to share her latest book, The Secret History of Consciousness, a Red Wheel Wiser release, to explore what is happening now and what we're going to be experiencing in the coming decades to come. Thank you so much for joining us, Dr. Meg. My pleasure, Zoe. Thanks for having me on. Well, you have had an interesting life, to say the least. Describe (laughs) for our audience how you got involved in writing about, as in this instance, the secret history of consciousness. Sure. It it was kind of a crazy story. You know, um, I had what a lot of people call a dark night of the soul. You know, uh, within about two weeks, everything that I thought my life was, everything that I thought work and love and home and life was all about, fell apart. And I mean crashed and burned. And I found myself sleeping on my friend's couch because home didn't feel good and working out of my car because that didn't feel good. And um, I woke up one morning just really crying my heart out. I, I wasn't dreaming that I recall. I was just kind of real emotional, I guess. And I looked up and I said, okay, self, we got to get to the bottom of this. You know, let's look at it from a different point of view. And what I learned that day really was that, first of all, I didn't like myself very much. And um, I didn't like who I was becoming. And second of all, I realized that I was living life based on what I thought everybody else wanted me to be. And I didn't even know who I was or what I wanted. And so I made a real effort from that day forward. I I actually looked up and said, okay, whoever I am, whatever this is, I accept. And from that day forward, first of all, I started learning how to tell myself the truth because I I deceived myself a lot to convince myself that I was, you know, doing well and and all of the things that we kid ourselves about in life. And um, then learning, you know, from there to tell other people the truth as well um, and speak my heart instead of what I thought they wanted to hear. And I had always been gifted, you know, intuitively, but um, after I really started to relax my defenses, and I mean really, I had nothing left to defend, um, what happened was my intuitive gifts started to really blow wide open, and I I started to know things. My medical intuitive abilities opened up, and I started running a lot of energy through my body, and I didn't know what to do with it, and every morning I would just kind of move with music and the energy, follow the energy, basically. And um, I I would beg, somebody show me what to do, because I didn't know how to relieve my body of the buildup of energy that was happening. And I was very frustrated and not very comfortable. And one morning, as I passionately said that, went from all humility, um, there was a being standing in my living room, and, and he started to move, too. He was very large, tall, and and very translucent and, and shimmery light. I mean, just beautiful, be- beautiful being. And, and he started to show me things about working with energy that just by subtly changing his moves a little bit different than I've been doing. And ultimately, there were a series of these guys who still talk to me today, um, but showed me all about how creation is put together, how sacred geometry um, has to do with it, what consciousness has to do with it, and how to use energy and all of these different awarenesses for healing purposes. And it was it was basically what I call a cosmic education with a series of uh, cosmic two by fours. And uh, that was kind of the beginning of it, and and I just really stepped into it and, and never said how or why or what or how come, just show me. And I think because I didn't get mental about it and I just let it kind of unfold, um, it was a lot fuller and more powerful than it, I think it would have been if I had gotten in the way of it. Dr. Bob and I have interviewed so many different journeymen and women who become channels for divine teachers, Mm -hmm. both from some claim off planet, some say on planet, some say interdimensional, some are ascended masters. There's all different kinds of names given to those that are trying to bring us to our own awareness of divinity. How would you describe those you are sort of, I guess one would say, having, is telepathic a fair word to use? 
Um, well, that's how it started, but but they they I, I can actually hear them talking now. When I first when they first came, I I wasn't open enough to hear them yet. Um, but they're a group consciousness. They're very high dimensional beings. They're other dimensional. They are masters. They've never been incarnated in bodies. They're light beings. They're they're really um, tapped into the universal consciousness. And so what happens is when I work with people, for instance, if I'm if, if we're speaking to a group because I do channel them. Um, that was just a kind of a natural byproduct that came of all of it. Um, what happens is is they assemble based on the the group or the person that we're working with, and um, and so it's not always exactly the same configuration of them. And and I think that's very cool because they totally fit the energy of the moment, which is you know, to me is more truthful than just coming together to have a chat, so to speak. <laughs> now, now, in your book, Dr. Meg, The Secret History of Consciousness, Ancient uh-huh. Keys to Our Future Survival, you talk about a number of things. One of them is the sacred sites across the world, how this connects with our consciousness, how that in turn connects with creation, and even the Mayan calendar. I mean, when Mm -hmm. you start looking at all of these things, and of course this is what 21st century radio has been devoted to for all of these decades, which is what some people refer to as the new paradigm, but what others simply call shift in consciousness. Mm -hmm. What is taking place that brings all these things to your attention? Wow. (laughs) How long do we have? No, seriously. (laughs) You know, I... When I call I call my guys the masters just because I, I naming them it takes it out of truth. So I just I just or I call them my guys, and you know they showed me all about sacred geometry and and how it comes together to form the particles of creation, and then how consciousness and intention and prayers works within that construct. And then I started to get the message that I needed to start going to these different sites before 2012, and I didn't know why. I just did it. And what I started to realize was that the ancient people left us instructions about everything my guys taught me thousands of years ago. And, for instance, the pyramids and and the the different configurations, like the spirals that are built into the sites and and, um, the locations and, and how they're built on intersecting ley lines, which is the energy grid of the Earth. And those, and they're based at predictable increments across the planet. I mean, it, I could go on and on for hours just about that. But what I realized was that in in what I call the before times, before written history, and before times that we can prove, and then after that, the ancient people really left us a roadmap to now, and. And so that's kind of what instigated the secret history of consciousness was putting all of that, all of what my guys taught me in relation to what the ancients left. I was awestruck, you know. So as I was writing that book, I kept standing up, turning in circles, and saying, "I can't believe this. Mm-hmm. I can't believe how this all fits." You know, even even though I had had the pieces for years, I hadn't put it together until it was time, which is often the case. You know, well, and, you know, it's it's a beautiful spiritual science. I think that's the way I would describe it, yeah. which is what the mystery traditions have been over the millennium. These are spiritual sciences. They're not just about individual anecdotal stories, though, of course, exactly. there is the individual experience of these truths. But but when we look at the Western mystery paths or the Eastern path or the indigenous people's paths, they all speak to the interdimensionality or intradimensionality of human consciousness. Let's talk about that a bit. How Love important to. is that to where we are and where we're headed? <laughs> Well, you know, it, it, there are a lot of things going on, and, and what a lot of people, most people don't realize is that there are realities outside of this one. It's, it's, a, it's a matter of fact. Anybody that has any, a, any a access to their higher awareness, their higher states of consciousness, can access this. I mean, it's, it, I, I think anybody can do it if they, if they can get to a certain space. And once you do, you realize that we're not alone in creation, you know, uh, let alone uh, the dimensions. And everything is relative, and whatever is happening here affects everything and vice versa. And there are beings in other dimensions that are so willing to help us, as you kind of mentioned earlier. And when we learn to get out of our everyday really mental selves 
and learn to get real, as I call it, you know, stop defending ourselves and really start to get present in the now, what we realize is that we're in a time that only happens about every 26,000 years. You know, as the, as the cycles of the Mayan calendar progress, which they do over and over again for 26,000 years, there are periods of darkness, like when, when the Inquisition was happening, when the Crusades were happening, you know, um, the World War II even, and, and World War I, those were periods of, of lacking enlightenment, for lack of better words. And now, you know, we talk about people waking up. People are talking about being conscious and aware and present, and, and they're using vocabulary they never use. It's a shift of consciousness, and, it's, and it is a shift of paradigms, and it's all the same thing. You know, we're changing how we look at things. It's, it's getting farther and farther away from I, me, my, and it's, now it's more about us and how we can work together as a collective to make vast changes, you know, in, in, in awareness and on our planet and, and with each other. And, and it's a process, you know, shifts don't happen literally in a split second. They're a process as our paradigm changes. And the way we looked at things, even metaphysically, even five years ago, no longer exists because we're in a fast forward evolution of human consciousness right now. It's, it's a shift of human awareness. And it's taking us into, uh, you know, we're just about at a crux point where we can make choices about how this planet goes on from now. You know, we've, we've been in a critical point in how we, how we live on our planet and how we treat each other and, you know, strictly uh, across the planet. And now is a time where we're starting to see more and more and more people are, are coming together to, you know, to help each other, to work together. And the awareness of, of, realities beyond this one is widening for many people. I think that's and true. Spontaneously. And, and one of the beautiful things to watch is the elder tradition, so to speak, or the first people's traditions becoming mm-hmm. very well known to men, women, and children around the world who don't necessarily live among the traditions. And it's almost a reawakening from every, everybody's soul's many incarnations coming yeah. together at a particular time in the trajectory of human evolution. Some say because we're moving into the inheritance of our light body, being conscious of both our immortal soul and vibrationally tuning up the physical body. I mean, this will sound strange to some people, but that That's it me. was <laughs> itself eventually meant to be an eternal body, or at least lived the thousand years Noah was supposed to have lived. And so right. it's it's an interesting journey when you actually look at the deep mystery traditions within the sacred religions and the indigenous paths, because they speak to all of this if you know how to read the code. That's true. That's true. And their oral traditions have almost identical stories, different terminology, but the stories are nearly identical clear across the world. And I think that was part of the reason that I needed to make these journeys that I've been doing because I, I walk into the Amazon, you know, or I, or I, or I go to Lake Titicaca or I go to Teotihuacan or I go to Stonehenge or, or anywhere in the world, and what people are doing is all speaking the same language. No matter what their physical language is, what they are saying is identical. And it just blows me away. I mean, I mean to meet a shaman from the Amazon forest, or, or a Toltec descendant in Teotihuacan, or, or, you know, any of the other number of people, um, the, the temples in Egypt, everybody is saying the same thing. And it's just mind-blowing to, you know, to have that experience when you've never met these people before. And, and interestingly, outside of the U.S. particularly, you know, the older, the indigenous people and, you know, a lot of the Native Americans as well, but, but I notice more that the indigenous peoples who have really stayed steeped in their traditions and haven't been distracted are all saying the same thing, all of them. When we come back, I'm going to ask you if you would to summarize for somebody in the audience going, all right, so Zoe and Meg are having this wonderful time together, (laughs) and they're on the same wavelength. But what does this mean to us? So when we come back, maybe you can sort of summarize for us, if you would, Dr. Meg, how you see it when you say they're all 
saying the same thing. If you've just tuned in, I'm Dr. Zohara Hieronymus. We're joined by Dr. Meg Blackburn Losey and her book, The Secret History of Consciousness, Ancient Keys to Our Future Survival, is a Red Wheel Wiser Canary 2010 release. Hi, my name is Dawson Church. I'm the author of the new book, Mind to Matter, the Astonishing Science of How Your Brain Creates Material Reality. In the book, you'll find how your brain creates molecules literally inside your body and outside of yourself as well. So please get a copy at mindtomatter.com. And thank you so much for listening to 21st Century Radio with Dr. Zoe Hieronymus. Welcome back to 21st Century Radio. I'm Dr. Zohara Hieronymus, and Dr. Meg Blackburn Losey, spelled L-O-S-E-Y, is our guest. Dr. Meg to her friends and others. Her book, The Secret History of Consciousness, Ancient Keys to Our Future Survival. It's a Red Reel Wiser Canary 2010 release. And Meg's website, www.spiritlight, spelled L-I-T-E, dot com. That's www.spiritlight.com. Com. So, Meg, you, you were telling us that whether we look at a Mayan civilization or some other, the Egyptian, um, that or that, I mean, there's so many we could start listing, but you said that, that generally the story is the same and that they're telling us the same thing, and it's important for us to hear it now. So first mm-hmm. tell us what it is we're being told and why it's important now. Well, all of them are speaking about getting back to living from the heart. And that love is an, you know, unconditionality is a way of being. It's it's not something that's in a Hallmark card or it's not an idea or an ideal. And they're also saying that it's a choice. You know, we have a choice what our life experience is. We can create whatever we want using our intentions. And we... You know, in previous generations, we didn't even understand that we had a choice how we lived our lives. We did it based on what everybody said, and even now, many people are still doing that. They're in jobs that they hate. Um, They're in relationships that they're not happy in. You know, there's so many different ways that people are are, are not really living the kind of lives they would want, but they're afraid to step out for whatever reasons, you know, um, usually social ideas or um, values that were handed down from their parents or or others, you know. And and the fact is that every one of us is a soul that's come to this planet to have an experience, and that experience is life. And what we do with that is our choosing. And that, you know, and that is across the borders. There There are no borders where these sentiments are concerned. And and there are, you know, different aspects of how to get there depending on the different traditions. But everybody is talking the same thing. And and I'm not hearing anything fearful from any of the indigenous peoples. What I'm what I'm hearing is is that, you know, we're at a point where we can we can literally shift how we live on this planet and with each other because when we work together um, and, and we come together with our intentions, the energy of them becomes exponentially expanded and communicates it within creation um, to, you know, bring that reality in a greater way and even faster. So, you know, and, and I mean, everywhere I go, I hear this, these same things. You know, the words are a little different, but the mm-hmm. sentiments are exactly the same. And the oral, oral traditions are the same, too. And... Um, so they're all saying that it's it's time it's time. It's well, you know, one of the, the things. Bottom line, it's time for us to get it. You know, it's time for us, and we can now because the way the energies are setting up, um, not only cosmically and in, 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 in the astronomy events that are coming up, because of the alignment and because of the changes in magnetically, electromagnetically, that are going to happen as a result of that. The ley lines are going to reharmonize clear around the planet, and as they do. They're going to get back to where um, they were when a lot of these pyramids were built. And so it's going to be very cool because, I, you know, most people are so busy studying the pyramids, they don't realize that each one is a little bit different size. The base may be the same, the angles may be the same, but the structure is different, the height's different. 
you know, its its relation to the stars may be different, and the, but they're always um, based on the four directions and stuff. And so each one represents a whole different set of harmonics. And so when those ley lines align, the pyramids are going to be harmonically at, uh, in alignment. And, and that means an expression of an expanded expression of energy coming from them and they are just i mean they're amazing energy generators and that's going to affect the entire planet as well it's going to be another expansive opening so we're not done with the changes the changes are ongoing you know just because we're alive now doesn't mean that we haven't had these changes and and you know the the weather changes and many of the other things that are happening they've happened since the earth started so it's you know when you start looking at it from a, a greater perspective, it's not a big scary thing. It's just a it's just a course of the uh, of the natural process of things. When we look, and of course, my husband always opens the show speaking about that we are one people, one planet. And I like the way that you had written it, and I mentioned it at the opening of our interview. We are the consciousness within the living one. It is true that all traditions speak to the fact that we are all one, having differentiated experiences of the light through the prism of our bodily incarnation. And that vibration is different in each one of us based on our attitudes, as you mentioned, our intention, and yeah. specifically whether or not we're coming into self-mastery. And I would like to speak about this because there's long been, um, I guess, people make excuses for their behavior and they say, well, I'm studying something spiritual or I'm a religious person. And then they turn around and they think something horrible or they say something horrible or I myself might feel something horrible. So that there is really, I mean, from my vantage point, when I look at the work after spending all of my lifetime in this particular arena of discussion is that we are asked to refine ourselves. Mm-hmm. And well, you know, and, and based on what you just said, I'd like to make the point that the other piece that we don't often re- or, or even some of us ever realize is that every expression that we make, every expression of energy, whether it's a thought, a movement, a word, an emotion, you know, an, an act, anything that we do communicates outwardly into creation and says, this is the reality that I want. Right. And we keep getting it, and we keep saying, how many times do I have to do this? How many times do I have to have this kind of situation? Well, it's easy. As soon as we do it differently, it changes, you know. But but we don't realize how powerful we are. I think and, that's I, w- I don't want to pass that point because I no. think I mean I've just been writing myself. I've been studying prophecy for ten years through the right. tradition of the Hebrews, looking at the original tent of meeting where the tabernacle was housed and the rituals in it, and discover, of course, it's the tree of life inside of the temple of person, and that mm-hmm. it's a description of how we all really move towards resurrection, which makes us immortal beings. Of light. So when you, I love the fact that you talked about these three levels of gamma consciousness. Hardly anybody talks about gamma consciousness. So I know. <laughs> tell us what you mean by that. Generally, we speak of alpha and beta and theta, but you go to the next step of gamma. Yeah, what I realized was, well, theta is the highest vibration that we're mostly familiar with, and that's what happens when we get into a really good deep meditation. And I realized that I don't meditate like most people. I do it with movement and energy. And I literally follow the energy. I don't try to make the energy do something. I follow it, and that's how I get familiar with it, and that is how I get my body attuned and and constantly balanced. And what I realized was that as I progressed with my own experiences, I was literally being in different states of consciousness. And there, I basically call them the three levels of gamma consciousness. And there, there's a spiral. You know, all of these sacred sites have some sort of a spiral in them, or or on them, or something, or in their construct. And we we hear a lot about the Fibonacci sequence. Anybody that reads Dan Brown or watches his movies probably knows a lot more about it than you ever thought you would. But the Fibonacci sequence basically is a pictorial, mathematically, of a of an infinite spiral. And that spiral is also overlays in our head. The smallest, tightest part of the spiral is wrapped around our pineal gland, 
it goes across the hypothalamus, across up across the pituitary, and then around the corpus callosum, which is the bridge between the two halves of our brain, our left and right brain, and then up across our crown and ends the widest part at our between our occipital bones and the back of our head. Well, a lot of people, when they start having intuitive gifts or, or start to be more aware of them, say, I get my information in the back of my head. And that that's where the what I call the seventh sense really starts. We might start getting flickers of awareness or we might know, you know, little bits of the future or the past. We might um, see colors. We might actually have glimpses of beings that when we turn around and look, they're gone. You know, any number of, of awarenesses can happen at that point. That's the um, initiation phase. That's, that's when awareness starts to open. As we use that awareness more and more, and we allow ourselves to relax further into ourselves, and that's really what it's all about, you know, Zoe. It's about being undefended. It's about being completely humble, completely present, and letting yourself have the experience. And that's where a lot of people, you know, don't get it because they they think it has to look a certain way or be a certain way. But but when we let ourselves be undefended, then we can get to what I call the communion phase, and that's at the crown. And that's where, at the crown, is also where energy from from creation is coming into our into our own energy systems. And I'm showing that in my next book really well. But um, you know, that's that's where we can really show our be connected um, intentionally, intentionally. And that's when we start to actually be able to interact with beings in other dimensions. And they are they run the gamut. I mean, they can be masters. They can they can be guides, it can be the angelic realm, they can even be ETs. I mean, it can be across the board because we can open our consciousness to different levels of, of vibration and actually be able to have contact with these different beings. And then the third level is what I call the ascension level, and that is at the pineal gland, which um, allopathic medicine doesn't know a whole lot about yet. It's a gland that's kind of a mystery, but that is our, where our physical ascension point is. And what's very cool about all of this is as we rise into these different aspects of gamma consciousness, our DNA responds in our body. And the, the DNA has little tiny light fields just like our body does. Science is now actually able to measure our light fields. Well, we have millions of strands of DNA inside of us. And as we get into higher and higher consciousness, the light fields around our DNA begin to expand. And at the moment that we reach ascension consciousness, the DNA fields in our body unify and can, are fully connected with our consciousness. So we literally become an electromagnetic field that we can intentionally, if we choose, turn to white light and disappear body and all. And that takes an extreme level of mastery, but it is possible. And it is possible to experience ascension consciousness and then come back to the planet and keep being a human being, you know. But here's the deal. You know, well, it's interesting because in the Kabbalistic description of entering um, these higher realms, which the high priest only does mm -hmm. one day a year during the day of Yom Kippur and comes into contact with the source of light from creation, which happens between the cherubim on the top of the ark and the tabernacle, it describes exactly what you're talking about. At least yeah. that's how I see it, too. So I'm going, yeah. oh, yeah, I found the same thing through the lens of the ancient <laughs> Israelites. It's amazing, you know, how the ancients... Uh how the ancients tell the same story and we're just getting back to it you know i mean i started seeing all these light symbols and stuff and and experiencing them in many ways and um, i actually just released a deck of cards with them because they're so beautiful and they're so powerful but i i found in the book in the gospel of truth in the nag hammadi gospels a full description of, of the living symbols mm -hmm. And that they were of the Father, and it was just an, I, I just my jaw dropped, and I and I celebrated because I wasn't losing my mind. People before me, thousands of years, had had the same experience, you know. And I this and I think new. that that's important. That's what's yeah. so important about this, because the the millennium teachings in the Western Mystery Path and all of the great sacred societies, whether they are on this planet or from the star system Sirius or Pleiades or any of the other planetary societies that our own Earth 
the people have said have brought us our teachings and our wisdom and that we're working with all these um, intergalactic travelers as well Mm -hmm. as interdimensional beings. So when you look at all of this and you put it all together, what is it that keeps somebody in fear? What is it that keeps someone in fear? Yeah. Because it seems to me that when I look at the barrier for any human between their ascended aspects of the soul that are eternal and those that are in the body physically, and this is also part of our 10 dimensionality, that Uh it's fear that shuts down the vessel. That's right. First of all, it's, it's fear of the unknown. You know, we like our safe little boxes. And it's very hard for us to do something different unless we have some chaos that kind of makes us go there. Um, That's human nature. The other piece of that, frankly, is that religious teachings have taught us that anything other than that, no matter what the religion is, Mm -hmm. is not of God or not of light, and we shouldn't go there. And frankly, that's a travesty. And not true. I mean, for anybody who, and I've had the opportunity to be all over the spectrum from Mm -hmm. the millennium teachings to the Hebrew writings, Mm -hmm. whatever it is, you know, channelers or out-of-body experiences, so that you begin to know that all of it is true. Exactly. And And it's all based on truth. It's just, you know, somewhere along the line... Um, you know, it's kind of like when you play that game post office and you whisper something into someone's ear and then yeah. they tell someone, and the message comes out way different on the other side. Mm-hmm. Well, time does that. Time does that with every teaching except the strict oral traditions that are handed down as a, as a sacred thing. And, but people stop telling us those stories. In, in many of the, in fact, most all of the religions, you know, they stopped telling us those pieces or they, or they left them out of the books, you know, mm-hmm. they left them out of, there's 36 Gospels, how many are in the Bible? Four. You know, I could go on and on about that, and you probably could too, but, but the point is, the stories got lost over time for many reasons. Exactly. Whether and, it was yeah. forgetting or ignorance or intention, you know, political reasons, selfish reasons, I mean, it, there's so many things that affected the stories over time. And, you know, you can't blame anybody. But what I say is nothing is in stone. And we have every possibility to experience anything and everything that we desire and and intend to create because we can do that. Amen to that. Yeah. We were talking a little while ago about, you know, um, different aspects of ourselves. and, 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 you know, we were kind of talking about it in a separate way. One of the things that I think is is paramount to mention in this conversation is that now is a time where we are literally marrying our humani- our humanity with our divinity. We, That's a beautiful a way to put it. We, I, I would also agree with you. I find the very same thing in my own life. I bet you do. You know, it's it's a time when we stop looking at ourselves as separate and disconnected, and we start to realize that. Like, what, like I said in the book, we are the consciousness within the living one. We are saying we are by our actions and our choices dictating the reality that we live and collectively that, are, that is in our world. And, and we have the power by just, first of all, knowing that, and second of all, acting on it, to, to create such fast change that... It's indescribable because it's in, the possibilities are infinite of what we can do because we have the you know we have the possi- infinite possibilities of creation at our very at our very access. Well, we are co-creators, we and it, and we're designed that way, whether it's yeah. in word, thought, and deed. And when we really come to and there's always different stages of self-realization in in the same teachings, mm-hmm. but as we become more trustful of the loving heart of one and we experience that oneness within, it's much easier to have compassion and love for all of creation. Even oh, yeah. even the neighbor that drives you crazy, you got to love them. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's true. Well, look, we have to take a little break, and then we'll come back. I want to talk a little bit about some of the journeys that you lead. We haven't. There's so many things, Meg, we haven't talked about, but I think that the general perspective is a really beautiful one. Well, Our guest is Thank Dr. You. Meg blackburn Losey at her book, The Secret History of Consciousness, Ancient Keys to Our Future Survival. Her website, www.spiritlite.com. Thank you. 
Hello, this is Dr. Shelley Joy, author of Developing Supersensible Perception, Knowledge of the Higher Worlds Through Entheogens, Prayer, and Non-Dual Awareness. You can learn more about me and my work at ShelleyJoy.net, where you'll find essays, information on my other eight books, audio recordings, videos, and 40 of my supersensible paintings. Yes, I'm a painter, too. That's ShelleyJoy.net, S-H-E-L-L-I-J-O-Y-E.net. You are listening to 21st Century Radio with the famous and amazing Dr. Zohara Hieronymus. Welcome back to 21st Century Radio. I'm Dr. Zohara Hieronymus. Dr. Meg Blackburn Losey's book is The Secret History of Consciousness. It's a wiser 2010 release, and it's a wonderful book. We can't certainly talk about everything in it tonight, but I think you'll be pleasantly surprised by the science as well as the spiritual awareness in it. So, Meg, I want to look then at some of the very specific things you say about the shift that's happening, because you mentioned very particular things in the star system. You said that what's going on now and our interdimensional awareness has a lot to do with the civilization of the Arcturian Corridor opening. What is that? Well, that was an event that happened several years ago. It's kind of when, you know, like I said, shifts are a process. And, and when this really fir- this shift first started happening, there were multidimensional um, different events that were happening and are still happening that affected us and how energy is coming to us, the, the route it's taking, the intensity, the patterns of it. And um, the energy often, that makes so many of us so that we can't sleep <laughs> for yeah, the night. Yeah, keeps us up, <laughs> many of us, um, makes us sometimes airheaded, sometimes um, we our bodies feel different, we don't want to eat the same things, we crave things we never wanted in our lives. I mean, there are so many ways that we're affected by these energies. And one of the first events that happened was the Arcturian Corridor opening. It's an interesting phenomenon because creation is, is an organism unto itself, and we're part of that. You know, we're, we're an, an integral part of, of that whole construct and it's it's a living pulsing moving organism that actually you know in in all of that movement and in all of that that pulsing that rhythm that it has and everything sometimes it's areas of it fold over itself or 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 unfold and when they're folded um sometimes those interdimensional pathways are closed and and vice versa and so when it gets in its rhythm back to certain states of of enfoldment, shall we say, different areas open and close. And the Arcturian Corridor is a major, major, let's call it a highway through creation that reopened several years back, and all the dates are in the book. And as it did, it connected dimensions directly you know, it's kind of like instead of using a tin can with a string, we can just <laughs> we can just communicate directly now. Um, whereas before, it was denser and, and harder to reach. And um, you know, after that, there was a, a Stargate system, the Ceylon Stargate system, that opened, and and that was also a result of the movement and 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 pulsation of creation in the, you know, basically in its cycles. And as as those Stargate systems open. We are more accessible by, uh, to, you know, it, both ways um, with multidimensional beings, and it's easier to travel. Also, you know, what I call the travelers, the beings that, that come to us, and sometimes we'll step in with other people to teach sciences and energy and technologies and, and many different things. It's easier for the travelers to, to come and help us because the corridors are open again. And, I mean, I could go on and on about this. this well, no, I think what's so interesting, though, as well, is to see the difference in the generation of children that are on the earth today and how many of them actually see the deceased who see ascended masters meaning they they have an acuity and a willingness to it's not about ridicule any longer it's it's about no. properly guiding others i mean the skeptics continue to be skeptics and that's just a closeness of heart and mind that will change but for those that really do want to be part of making peace and unity on the earth there is an opportunity to do it through prayer through reflection through meditation through kind words through yeah. simple actions it's not that everybody's going to be the ascended master tomorrow though we all have that written in our script if we choose to embody it 
Exactly. And you know what's really neat? You know, we are what I call the bridge generation. Because we have said, yes, maybe there are, are other possibilities, or yes, I can do this, and weird is wonderful, or whatever, <laughs> you know, be, because that's my new, that's my new slogan, I weird like is that. Wonderful. It's a good bumper that sticker. <laughs> <laughs> took me years to get to that. Took me years to get to that. But, I like that but, one. <laughs> because we said yes. The kids that are coming into our world now are being born unhindered and naturally using their gifts deeply, and I mean deeply using them in some many cases, actually. And they're coming in at a time where the consciousness in our world is changing and how we see our world is changing and the possibilities. We, we are basically creating an open slate. And these kids are coming in at a time with all of this awareness and all of this heart energy um, to, to be able to step in and take over the helm of, of the earth, of the planet, and take it places we only began to think about. You know? I can remember an interview I did with a number of Apollo astronauts when we started talking about consciousness. Mm-hmm. And I remember speaking with Edgar Mitchell about this as well. Um, did they ever talk about that we would eventually be able to use our consciousness to use the Earth itself as a spaceship? And I have to say, report back delightedly, that yes, they actually talk about things like that, that they understand that our consciousness is the mover and the director and that we are all part of that creative genius. That's exactly right. You know, it, it, and to take that a little, just one step further, you know, when we put out an intention with our consciousness, you know, it's kind of like the arrow. And when we fuel that with passion, that's that's the key. You know, we fuel that intention with with our passion, with our hearts. That's the bow, you know. And, and so when we can connect all of those aspects of ourselves together and work as a whole being from within creation rather than a, a dualistic perspective and working at it, what happens is we're unlimited. We can do anything, you know, and, it, and it's just a question of knowing that each of us is having different experiences. They're not going to look the same, and they're never going to be the same twice. And when we, when we can get past the fact that we have to have experiences a certain way because somebody else did, you know, or or we can we can get past the fact that we had an experience and we don't need to keep trying to have it again. We just need to be open to whatever's next. You know, right? Then we can really, really step into our power, and there's nothing we can't do. You know, there's nothing we can't do. So I'm ready. Are you? I am, and I absolutely share your opinion. I mean, I'm a true optimist in the sense that I believe in the human spirit and I believe in cosmic deity. And to me, it's just a question of getting out of our way. I mean, for Mm -hmm. most of us, it's just we're in our way. We're in our own way, put it that way. That's just our mentality. And And it's in cahoots with our ego, which lies all the time. (laughs) <laughs> true. It's true. And when we believe that we are separate, that's how we experience ourselves. And when we overcome that sense of separateness, doubt, and fear, we experience ourselves in the unity of all. And that's exactly. bliss. And it happens while you're doing the laundry. I can vouch for that. <laughs> yeah. 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 Look, you true do story. take people on wonderful journeys. And I didn't want to finish the program without giving you an opportunity to tell us about that. Well, thank you. Yeah. You know, um, I, I, usually do two journeys a year. I just came back from Peru, and um, I have a crop circle journey. It's going to be a madcap adventure because we're going to do things like I, I have rented Stonehenge for two hours at sunrise, and, and just my group, um, if there's enough of us anyway, just my group will be um, in there inside the stones, which they don't let you do anymore. Will it's they just, be able to find this at your website, Meg? Yeah, everything's on um, the the Dr. Meg's schedule page. We've got some major, awesome um, things lined up, the Glastonbury Well and, um, of course, you know, the whole area, Glastonbury, Stonehenge, Avebury, all of that. Terrific. Look, I have to send people to your website to learn about it. We're out of time. www.spiritlightlite.com. Dr. Meg Blackburn-Losey, her book, The Secret History of Consciousness. If you miss any of it, you can find it online at www.21st21stCenturyRadio.com. 